adjacent to Lake Shore Drive is Oak Street Beach and the Chicago Open, the final stop of the Gold Series events on the 2022 AVP Tour. We're so glad to have you with us on this hot and steamy Saturday. Here's a look at our stadium court where we are about to get another match underway. It's all about survival Saturday, win or go home. Contenders bracket play is all happening right here. Hi everyone, I'm Cameron Irwin alongside Olympic gold medalist Dane Blanton. We have 12 versus 13. John Hyden and his partner Logan Weber versus Billy Allen and Jeremy Casebeer. Two teams that have both not been able to break into a semifinal. Both of them wanting to do so here in Chicago. Yeah, and it's going to be a battle, but I think the bigger story is John Hyden. He's closing in <laughs> on his 50th birthday, and the guy is looking like he's 30 years old out there. It's just crazy. He and his partner, Weber, I believe, are close to 23 years apart, which is just incredible. But uh, what an inspiration he is and the level that he's playing at. Uh, you know, I love matchups like this. This is 12 versus 13, so on paper, it looks like it's going to be great. So I hope it uh, lives up to its billing. All right, well, it's time to meet the four athletes down on the sand we have our third member of our crew ready to get them introduced all right mark sherman time to take it away Ooh, when i saw this one on the bracket last night i was very very excited for it and it is going to be a good one ladies and gentlemen early in the morning still here on saturday loser of this match goes home to the 13th place nobody wants to do that winner of this match in to the top 10 and let's meet these two teams shall we first up this guy oh he is he is so, so, so good in that back row behind the block. He just locks in, he dials in, he does it. It's a little bit understated, but it is so much fun to watch because he is just so dang good. Out of Fallbrook, California and Cal State Northridge, go Matadors, it's Billy Atlin. And his partner, one of the favorites to watch from the service line at the net, bringing the energy. So much fun when he gets dialed in out of UCLA in Santa Barbara, California. It's Jeremy Casebear. <laughs> and their opponents, this first guy, well, he lives close by as well, just just a few hours around towards the east side of Lake Michigan, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And he's got some family in the crowd today, including Hart. Shout out to Hart up there, wherever you're at. I see you, I see you. And ladies and gentlemen, let me hear it for Logan Weber. <laughs> and his partner out of San Diego State University. Oh my goodness, the things this guy has done over the last 30 years from his indoor days at San Diego State, represented the USA two times in the Olympic Games before he came to the AVP Tour, winning his very first event at the young spry age of 32 back in 2005 in Mason, Ohio. He is now a 13-time winner on the AVP Tour, one of the best side-out players, one of the best dudes in the history of the A. V. P. He's the H bomb, Johnny Hayden. 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 Thirteen times has John Hayden won on the AVP tour. Forty-nine years old, and I think his birthday is what a month away. Yeah, October seventh. Ooh, there it is. Take a look now at the elimination bracket because it's win or go home. This is how the men's side has shaped up to this point. Hyden, Weber, Alan Casebeer, you see them highlighted there, as well as who they will face in terms of the winner on today's stadium court matchup. That would be Corey and Palm, the number 10 seed. You also see Liam Pretty, the number 11 seed, awaiting the winner of Dross and Frischman and Hagen Smith, as well as Jake Dietrich. That was quite the introduction of John Hyde by Mark yeah, Sherman. I some mean, love. he was on point right there. <laughs> He's got just such an amazing resume. Oh, how about that set, Casebeer? Chest to the net. That's Jeremy Casebeer. Hats off on both sides. Weber losing his hat as well as Casebeer. As we take a look here, huge up at the net joust. Continues this time. It's Weber's hat who falls off. <laughs> There's that set I was all talking the, about. <laughs> all the equipment falling off. <laughs> Just the first rally. 
Here's a look at Jeremy Case Bear, 33 years old, originally out of Santa Barbara, California, known for that, the tough jump surf. Billy Allen has been phenomenal in the last few tournaments and showing right now great defensive play, transition point, Billy Allen. And I like the chemistry between Billy Allen and Case Beer. They seem like they, they vibe off of one another, complement each other really well. And then, of course, they have the great John Mayer in their box as the coach. And so a lot of uh, great volleyball minds on that side, always strategizing. Yes, the great volleyball minds you also have. You know, John Hyden known for his strategy, his tempo offense, everything that he does. John Mayer in the box, four-time AVP champ. Also coach over at LMU. And that yeah, this looks like some jumper sand. Jeremy Sean Casebeer looks Lyle. elevated right now. I know we just missed that, but looks a little different than it did in Manhattan Beach. Sand. Man Manhattan Beach definitely notorious for the deep sand. And it can make a huge difference. You know, a lot of the big jumpers, they like to play on the deep sand because it gives them more of an advantage, even though they jump a little higher on the pack sand, but everybody else is jumping higher. So. The notorious Billy Allen chance already starting just four points in. Pulling into the angle as well as defense into the angle. Both these teams have yet to reach a semifinal in 2022. A couple fifth place finishes for both of them. Just look at Logan Weber. He's now serving. The youngest of the four at 26 years old. Some quick footwork from him to jump into that angle or get in front of the angle. Hide and work in towards the line. Great court awareness by John Hyden. He was there to make the defensive play, but realized the ball was just a couple inches wide, so he let it go. We go to the left side of Jeremy Casey. A deep serve. Is it out of bounds? Hyden's wiping his brow right there, feeling like he got lucky. One. Yeah, you'll take what you can get right there. And all four of these athletes, such great players. They're not going to make a lot of errors. And I think for Billy Allen and Case Beer to be successful, Case Beer really has to get that jump serve working. We know how lethal it can be when it's on. Really attacking that sideline for Case Beer already. Case Beer finding the side out point. People don't want to deal with Billy Allen, his ability to catch up. That was a heck of a serve by Weber down the line, but Casebeer made it look easy. Passed it well, recovered, came in and hit an extreme angle. Casebeer attacking the service from out of the middle of the court. Just miss hitting that. John Hyden, the two-time Olympian. Now serve, played in the 2000 Olympic Games for the indoor team, as well as the 96 Olympics. 96 tied for nine, 2000 with an 11. Big block, Logan Weber. Logan Weber, huge at the net, six foot seven. And you know, we talk about the, the youngsters on tour. Logan Weber's only 26 years of age. I mean, Andy Benish, 27. Um, we, we saw, of course, Miles Partain is at 20. There's, there's just some really good players that are young players that are coming along. Evan Corey, wow, was he something special yesterday. Just bringing it. Yeah, some big time jumpers out there too. Six foot seven. It's nice to have some blockers coming in from Logan Weber to Andy Finish, also at that six foot seven mark. No, 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 no. And you can imagine the amount of learning that's taking place on the side of Logan Weber. He's got Johnny Hyden next to him. But as much as you can take from John Hyden, I've been impressed at times I've kind of sat behind their box and been able to listen. And there's still a ton of communication kind of going back and forth between the two. It's not just John going at him with all the intel. 
John still taking pieces. Trying to figure out the best game plan from both him and Weber. Seven, seven. seven apiece now. You know, we talk about the youth and the growth of beach volleyball on the men's side is something that has been in the conversation in the volleyball world for the last few years, especially in the United States. We've seen on the international level, the youth is kind of taking over, right? You think of Sorum and Mole and some of the, the accomplishments that they've had. And you're starting to wonder what's going to happen on the men's side. So it is so nice to see those like Weber and Bennett start to come up. But a lot of it is, you know, these guys are coming out of the woodwork. Logan Weber is out of Michigan as he takes that swing. Just off the top. But he even said, he goes, there's no boys volleyball in Michigan. He actually learned from watching his sister. He has two older sisters, but that's kind of the start for so many. So yeah. he started playing in juniors tournaments in Holland, Michigan, when he was about 14 years old. And then his sister's club team started a men's team. They just had seven players. And he said they were absolutely terrible <laughs> when they first began. He traveled to Chicago in Ohio to play in tournaments. So he spent some time in this area cutting his chops. He also played at Cincinnati Christian University for four seasons. And then started to play beach volleyball every single summer. Uh-oh. Uh, net violation points Allen and Casey. Little collision under the net. Yeah, you gotta be careful in those situations. Weber, I think, a little frustrated with himself right there. Looks like no harm, no foul. Nobody's hurt, fortunately. That ball's a little tight. There you see the contact underneath the net it's interesting on the beach of, of course there's no distinct line there it's up to the ref to decide if any interference took place but that was right under the net which is kind of the neutral zone i mean i guess you could draw a line in the sand <laughs> might get a little muddled though nine nine now keeping things close here in set one Cameron Irwin alongside Dane Blanton. Nice set from Allen. And unloading is Jeremy Kingsbeard. Yeah, he challenged John Hyden right there, went right at him, and Hyden usually digs those ball right up in the air. He could not control that one. Kingsbeard. Carrying the load from jump serving, he jump floats now. Almost every side out opportunity thus far. Ooh, Slapping is. that down the line. Well, a little, uh, contact, Trevor down. Crab esque right there. Yeah, he's letting, it, letting that ball drop really low though, which is risky, especially at his height. You want to go up there, get the ball very high, even if you're doing the drop shot like that. But when it crosses the net just an inch over, it allows. Shorter players to kind of get into play. I'm laughing at that serve because John Hyde just barely touched that for the short serve trickler. 11 10 into the technical timeout. Y'all saw the verticals on screen between those two. 24 inches for Weber, 20 for the 49 year old. Now residing in Franklin, Tennessee. He's got a beach academy there, so if you want some coaching or play, you got to find John Hyden, the Iron Man, 163 AV, AVP events, 13 titles with, get this, 19 different partners, oldest to ever appear in a main draw at 49 years old, continues that trek every time he steps out on the sand in 2022, also winning an AV, AVP as well as FIVB titles here in Chicago, it's a 16th appearance that's tied for the most of all time. He's got two titles here back in 11 and 17. Two time Olympian, best defender on tour as well, time and time again. 
Who else has played 16? Is it Ed Rallage? I think it might be. Yeah, I think, I think so it as is. well. Producer Ange confirming. Yes, Ed Ratledge. Also right there next to John Hyden. John Hyden again showing his speed. And he got that ball just high enough for Weber to get a little bit of heat on it. Here is the soft block, so it's got to go over by Weber. And Really nicely executed play, and whoa. <laughs> Ducking cover if you're Billy Allen right there. Yeah, Billy Allen got his hands up just in time. Logan like Weber goes, oh, goodness, sorry. Take a look at this overpass, and that's not what you want, looking at 6'7 Weber with nobody in front of him. It seems like they're making Jeremy K. Spear have to move a ton, trying to kind of exert as much energy. We talked about the jump serve. They're now serving him short. He's seeing every side out ball. I mean, they're kind of putting, not to say just pressure in terms of where the ball's going, but the number of times he's having to make plays. It'd be interesting to see the total number of jumps in terms of differential between K Spear and the rest of the crew at the end of this. Yeah, when you got a guy who likes to jump serve, he's a full time blocker, he's got to work really hard. And sometimes teams will take the strategy of let's try to tire him out. Let's give him use yeah, yeah. right there. Showing these freshies up. 13 apiece, a nice block by Jeremy Casebeer. Yeah, I got options. Come Jeremy Casebeer, you hear mic'd up. You like that? It felt like he was mic'd up. That's our ref stand. Push, push set. Go, go. That was a real push set. Nearly traveling 20 feet plus. That was really nice offense. Case of wasn't fooled. He slid out laterally, but John Hyden just poked it over the block. Really like that offense right there. Makes the blocker work extra, extra hard. Another way to maybe try and wear down that of Case Spear. Also creates opportunities in terms of spacing. Billy Allen right now. Hitting 857. There's a reason they stay away from him. Six of seven, zero errors. K Spear with his fifth kill on 10 total attempts. On the other side, Weber, four of seven, Hyde and two of four. Each with an error. 14 apiece now. Zero breeze. Here at Oak Street Beach. Typically in the afternoons, you'll get a little bit of something, but so far, it's dead still. Weber, finding the line again. Hide him with a little bit more communication there after the play. Yeah, they just keep trading blows back and forth. Almost each team waiting for the other to kind of to break, maybe make a couple errors. Did you ever play with someone, Dane, that gave you as much information as John Hyden might give a partner? Did you like that type of information? You know, it, 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 I never like played with the guy who was that really older veteran yeah. that was maybe 15 years older uh, and kind of schooling you as we you know we yeah. saw with with kind of like the the, the Phil, Phil and, and Todd yeah. yeah or yeah. sorry as of this year I'm sorry yeah yeah uh, but no not really it was kind of I was playing with players similar in terms of experience and so it wasn't the the teacher and the the pupil as much but um, I think those situations are great. Like for John Hyden, it's it's really instrumental that he find the right young player to extend his career. Yeah. I mean, we already know what he's going to do. It's just um, staying up with the times. And if he can keep landing these young partners, he can still do his thing. 
now, though, in a coaching role, I imagine the uh, different strategies for process yeah, yeah. and information exchange has been right. fun to try and figure out in terms of coaching over at USC, back-to-back -back national championships under the tutelage of the man next to me. Winner, of course, taking on Corey and Palm. Loser going home with a 13th. Sixteen all now. Whoa, what a serve! That's right down the middle right there. You can hit that spot. It really can cause some, some trouble, especially when you you know when you you can't really determine usually the cross court player is is the one that calls it but if the server's coming right out of the middle it can get confusing can he find another oh he's blowing him up nice set but billy allen's all over it rolling that to the net quick tempo Oh, the stab! Yeah. Oh, and that yeah. violation! Kaysmere throws his hands on his head in disbelief, saying, no, 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 that was Weber in the net. No, it's not disbelief. <laughs> he knows he did it. He's just so bummed he's called on it. He, I mean, he raked it really hard. I know, but I think it was disbelief. I think he thought that Weber was in the net before him. Oh, yeah, but right here. It's an obvious net, and he oh, thought he sure. could sell it and get away. <laughs> he almost was like, no, how did I get caught? <laughs> Love the intensity. 17 all. We played a 21. And they're going to slow things down. K. Spear Allen, take a timeout. I think that's a good timeout right there. You haven't used one. Take a little break after that. Tough rally coming up short. So right now, if you look at the numbers, Hyden 167 in terms of his efficiency. He's only had six attempts, the fewest of all four, two kills, one error. At what point do you think, maybe do we, do we try and toss one his way, or do we just keep him every once in a while getting the transition opportunities? I think you, you stick with it, what you're doing. Yeah, and okay. I think right now, I mean, that 17 all, this is where you want to be if you're both teams. You're yeah. in st striking distance. It's a game to four right now. And I think both strategies are working for both teams. You know, they've come in with a game plan. And you just want to position yourself to have an opportunity to win at the end of each set. And that's exactly where both of these teams are. Billy Allen, again, doing what he did back in Manhattan Beach, staying nearly errorless in terms of his offensive efficiency. Right now, just with one error, seven kills, one attempt. The there highest efficiency of 545. Of set one, 17 it's also so impressive when you see somebody like that, because he's the defender. He's not getting side out opportunities, so each of those is coming through a transition opportunity defensively. Line, line. Quick set. It Quick is hands for Billy Allen. Here in set one, eight, and you can tell Weber a little disappointed with himself. I think he was trying to seal up that line, and the low line by Kasebeer gets it done. One point differential on the side change. Come on. From three stories up, Logan Weber finding the edge of the block. Yeah, Logan Weber has to watch out. I've seen on multiple occasions letting the ball drop a little bit. Right? He's so long, he's got such, he, you know, he's already at 6'7 to start with, but he's got long arms. So go get that ball as high as you can and, and take everybody else out of play. When you let that ball drop, you let shorter players in play. K Spear. Second chance, good communication. K Spear. Quick set, housed. It's Billy Allen. What a block by Weber right there. Low and pressing over. Here it is.
Kids are in a great position, and look how he presses over. Not concerned about going high. You want to get over, get to that ball, and cut off some of the angles. And serve now. First the time. to do takes set number one. 19 apiece. Spears numbers, one ace, three errors. At times, he's gone with the jump float. Clears the one runway now. Ready for the jump top. It's a good toss. And that one, you did not pull down the midway. Yeah, really nice extension on that. And you saw Billy Allen, he knew right away there's no way he was going to run that ball down. He was hoping for that dropped elbow, and if that shot has a little loop in it, Allen can run it down. Not that time, though. Set point, Hayden and Weber. You, you. Out of the middle. What and finding the top of the block. Nice approach by Billy Allen, that time facing cross court. And at the very last second, not only did he cut it across his body, he kept it really high. the block there's the cover and you just want to put this in those deep corners you don't want to go out of bounds because you're not trying to get a winner there you're just trying to get another opportunity and so it's a tough one Twenty-one to twenty, another timeout taken on the sand. Allen and Case Beer now with a set point opportunity. I think it's time we look at a serve of the day. Dane, I think we know where this one's coming from. Case Beer? I think that's safe to say. Let's take a look at the waste management serve of the day. The ace from Jeremy Case Beer. Yeah, that thing was beautiful. From the middle to the other middle, straight up the gut, the ace. Yeah, when he catches fire, and we've seen him do it a few times, you know, I believe it was in Seattle years ago where he, I think he had 12 aces in, in one match and nine in another, and he was just feeling it. It was just on point. And he's always searching for that because that serve is such a weapon for K Spear. And uh, I'd say it's, it's lukewarm today so far. He'd like it to heat up a little bit more. I think that's safe to say. Not too bad to this point. Like that last ace, I'll tell you that much. Set point still. Oh, no, left hand just off the fingertips. The UCLA Bruin. Yeah, he made a nice lateral move to throw that back, but he just ran out of court. Mentioned that Seattle tournament from Jeremy Casper. That was back in 2019 when he won the title alongside Kane Shulk. He led the tour in aces with 1.2 per set that year. Oh, and dodged I, a bullet. There's, those are two errors right there from Weber that are just painful in terms of volleyball players, right? You got to think the over or the, the free ball sent out of bounds, and then your partner gets a dig as a blocker, and you touch the net. Woo. Bummer. Another set point for Allen and Case Beer. So funny how whenever there's a net, the dig is perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> And the ace! Weber nearly ripping off his shirt. Just frustrated as he gets blown up with that last ball. Perfectly timed. Allen and K Spear 23 to 21. They take set number one.
Get ready for a whole new wave of White Claw. New full flavor White Claw Surf. Sensational refreshment for a taste like no other. We all know it's a good idea to recycle. But what happens to that aluminum can or all that paper after you put it in the recycling bin? Where does it go? What does it become in its second life? See how WM is always working for a sustainable tomorrow at wm.com slash stories. It's the choices we make that define us. Try and Trevor is coming off a tough, heartbreaking loss. And ultimately, the enemy is within. Some people want it. Some wish for it. But others make it happen. Try and Trevor is super lethal, bringing fire and passion to the court. How will you take charge? to 23 that was your first set score we went the distance in set number one Cameron Irwin alongside Dane Blanton for this matchup between Hayden Weber Allen and Case Spear out of the elimination bracket both these teams relatively evenly matched Dane yeah you know when I look at the stats the the, the big thing that it focus on nine digs as opposed to four so Billy Allen winning in the backcourt really doing his thing and then the serving of Case Spear just two aces right there but that doesn't count for the trouble that he has got the opposition in. So you want to keep that up right now. Let's look at John Hyden. Just a few points of difference in set one. Just some critical errors late. They made all the difference. Allen quick into the angle. Billy Allen and Jeremy Casebeer. In terms of those gold series standings, they do have a small chance of making it in to the Phoenix Championships. There would have to be a lot that takes place for them to do that in terms of where they might finish, plus other teams getting third, fourth, Born Crab, Crab Sander, oh, Budding Field, a few teams ahead of them. Oh, what a They'd have to have a pretty phenomenal finish here with a little bit of luck to find their way in Phoenix. What are, what are their finishes in Atlanta and in Manhattan Beach? I think a fifth and a ninth, or a ninth and a fifth. Hold on. So a fifth and a win would be nice. Yep. Right. Yeah. They, they need they need to do something spectacular. Yeah. So yeah. excuse me, it was a fifth and a thirteenth. Okay. So it's got to be. It would have to be a yeah. first plus with, you know, Phil and Casey dropping and Taylor Crab and Taylor Sander also with a specific finish. Of course, if you want to find all those scenarios, you can head to avp.com where Mark Sherman did a. Phenomenal write up as to exactly how all that could shake down in the Gold Series standings. Nice block from Case Spear. There's the URL for the deep dive. I love the intent, intense approach that Jeremy Casimir always brings to the court. He's so locked in, he's so focused. Dane, you like that one? That raised your eyebrows. Yeah, I like I like how high he hit that ball. I mean, 
Wow, that's that's <laughs> tough to stop. I don't care who you are. Oh, nice play from Billy Allen. He's finding ways to keep his, his team going right there. Yeah, here's the interesting thing. When you have the joust like this, if he would have wiped that ball out of bounds, it would have ended the rally right away. But um, he muscled it in, still made a great play. Billy Allen, so stoic, so consistent. Playing his brains out at 40 years old, too. Originally out of Fallbrook, California. Played at Cal Sto State Northridge. Now up in the PNW. Married to also volleyball player and beach volleyball pro, Janelle Allen. Nine kills, 467, plus eight additional digs. For Allen. Change the side out to Billy. Push again. What a shot carving that ball to the sideline. And that was, you know, that was an example. You had John Hyden running that kind of flare to the outside. It's an example of sometimes you run an offense and it gets so complex that it can be detrimental on your side, right? If it doesn't go down. Distance traveled. A thousand feet of difference between these two. That's pretty substantial. Especially considering the set scores. You have to imagine some of that is in the case of Jeremy Casebeer's jump serve and the amount of distance he travels for each one of those, as well as getting up to the net. I actually sat down this morning with the Connexon crew just to kind of see how much data actually exists within that program. And I'll tell you right now, we're kind of just scratching the surface. It's pretty phenomenal. You can see where the defenders set up in terms of their strategy, how far they travel per each move for every single dig. It also says the speed at which they're traveling in those distances. It's pretty phenomenal. Not only do you also see the highest vertical, but they even have hang time. And I think you'll be surprised later on when we get some of the guys I was uh, comparing out on the sand. We'll go through some of that. I think you'd be shocked as to some of those that have that greatest hang time, both on the men's and women's side. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a fascinating system. We actually did the test at USC. Yeah. And it was nice because our players could see some of the feedback. And a lot of, if not all, the NBA teams have them at their practice facility. And it's really great to figure out where you're peaking at, where you're peaking at when you start to fatigue. And at what point, and you, you have real analytics that can support those decisions rather than saying, uh, you know, how are you feeling? You know, what's going on? It, you know, you get that real next level data. Let's just say some of the ones up at the top, Sander, and as you'd imagine, Field as well as Evan Corey. But there's one other, there's one guy that has the highest jump on tour. And I'll tell you right now, he's Taller than six foot five already. That's your hit. Is that for me to guess? No, we'll get to it later on. We'll see. High hands for Weber. Billy Allen with the quick snap. Yeah, give me your guess. Who do you think it might be? I don't know. I was asking if are you putting me on the spot? Yeah. So he's taller than six foot five. I'll give you that. And he's got the biggest jump. He's got the biggest jump through through the Connexon events, which are your Gold Series events. And he also has the longest amount of hang time. Uh, Triborn? Nope. But good guess. Hmm. Oh, uh, Taylor Sander? He's up there, but not the highest. 8-6 now. The Make it 8-7 with the footfall. 
There's a look at the numbers for John Hyden. 28.3, 22 total jumps. That's up there. Whoever oh, up and over right there. So impressed at how far he gets across the net and into the opposition's space. And that's what you want to do. Don't give the hitter any chance. Just go up and almost grab that ball. The highest thus far is 33. Point one two inches, and that came at the hand of Andy Benish, who's already six foot seven. That's a huge jump. I That's didn't know Andy Benish had that. Yep. Talk about a Why? jump touch. <laughs> nice snap from Logan Weber. I told you it might surprise you. You did surprise me yes. for sure. Again, those numbers brought to you by Connexon. Three blocks now, three controls for Logan Weber. Oh, what a stab, John Iden. Go, go. Outside, outside. I'm here, Stephanie. <laughs> what a great rally right there. Another nice control by Billy <laughs> Allen on the right side with a joust. Look at that stab. John Hyden, right hand, one hour up, and there's Billy Allen with the joust, giving his team another opportunity, and then the error by Weber into the net. And wow. now everybody has assumed the position. They've now stood back up, but all four of the athletes went hands on knees after that one. Trying to catch their breath. One point of difference, well above 80 degrees now, humidity through. Well, there's no roof, but the figure is roof. <laughs> Here on uh, Stadium Court at Oak Street Beach. Some depth on that serve from K-Sphere. Hey! Is it in? Is it out? Oh, I got it. A little bit of oh, no, no, no. the in the five John Hyden looking at Jeremy saying, ask your partner, he knows that ball's in. <laughs> Looks like the ball's gonna be called in. But I do like the defensive setup because so many times we've seen Weber now kind of chop that ball down the line. They had the line defense in place. Billy letting this go. See, look, he's in a good position to be able to dig this ball. He just thought it was wide. He stopped himself. So making the adjustment defensively. Always play the close ones, right? You, you, you. Ace! Logan and Weber. Here we go, we go to the ace. Right up the middle, he just the technical tie-in out. Logan Weber and Shani Hyden. 11-10 into the technical timeout. We said this one was going to be fun, and it's proven so to this point. 11-10. Andy Matthews underneath the umbrella for those two. But hey, it's time for you to make your predictions, especially for this gold series event here at the Chicago Open on Valley Plays AVP Predictor Game. It's time for you to take your shot to win six VIP tickets to the championships in Phoenix. All you have to do is scan that QR code or, you know, if you have a little difficulty with that, you can also go to valleyplay.com slash AVP to make your winning predictions. If you predict correctly, you win a VIP package free and head on over to the championships in Phoenix. It's time to make your picks. I actually went over there uh, yesterday. I don't know if I'm allowed to <laughs> make make my picks or if I win a VIP package. I don't know, Dane. Here's a look at the men's standings as to who is in to this point. Brunner and Shock have clinched a top four position. Now just jockeying to figure out where their seating will be. They are the only team to do so to this point on the men's side. There will be four teams in based off of points and then two wild cards also. 
You can see Allen and Kay Spear, number eight, down at the bottom, still with a small chance to get in there. Got to have a phenomenal finish here in Chicago. So it's your best two out of three Gold Series events. Don't forget about those wild cards as well. Two on both the men's and women's side. Yeah, I wonder who those will go to. I think it all depends on who makes the top four and who might be left out. We will know after tomorrow who's in the top four. Good touch and beautiful set. No, no, no. Oh, and Hyden knows it's so frustrated. You know, I think what Hyden thought was there was going to be a block in his face. He kind of did a push cross court, and there was no block, so it ended up a little bit wide. Here it is. He kind of pushes it a little too far. You don't see that very often out of John. Rich Lamborn had sweet potato fries yesterday. They're now on the board. Nice. 12-11. Everyone doing the slow walk, fixing the divots in the sand. The heat starting to get to everybody. We need some of those cooling towels up here in the booth, Dane. I know. Where do we get one of those? Maybe some fans. Or some it's deep very, dish. We got any fans here in Chicago? Just saying, the broadcast booth would not mind some deep dish this afternoon. <laughs> I feel like that was Kevin Barnett's move all the time. Nice play. Jeremy Casebeer. No way. The backhanded slap up. Overhand dig. Rolled. Oh, it can't find it. I'm not going to lie. I wanted Case Beer to win that point just so, you know, he could get the uh, double highlight. <laughs> That's a play my dad used to make in rec ball. What a great <laughs> rally right here. There's the poke. There's the back flipper to the corner. Almost catches them off guard. And then a beautiful two hand over. <laughs> And then he tries for the accurate Where's line it? shot out just out of bounds. Out he knows he did everything really right on that play except for the last shot. Fun Here fact, uh, Birdie and Mike got kicked out of rec ball because of plays like that. Be Small town Hawkinson. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that backhanded flipper at six foot five. An indoor game, apparently. 13-11, time to slow things down. Allen and Case Beer trail by two. And Phil Zalhauser coming up next on stadium at 1120 start time. Taking on Miles Evans and Saw Hyde in there. Finish. I don't know what he was putting in his system, but. Hyde's got a secret potion. I know, that's what I'm wondering. You don't make it to almost 50 years of age, a month away from his 50th birthday and competing with the top players in the United States and still in the mix. I mean, I don't see any signs of him stopping or slowing down. It's, it's really impressive how he has taken care of his body, how he has trained over the years, and uh, how he's kind of figured out the formula that works for him. 14 attacks, five kills, nine digs. Very active out there, and he's in a good position right now to possibly win the second and force a third. Maybe some pin particles for my Marvel fans out there. Trying to work outside the antenna, or actually underneath the antenna. I liked Weber's decision. He, he saw the ref stand. He said, I think I can make the play, but I'm going to go around under the net, but uh, couldn't get there. <laughs> Side to test hide it. Oh, right place, right time for Weber. What a swipe from his left to his right, pulling that ball into the angle. He almost had to cover that ball. Weber's laying down over there. Here comes the ball. Then he transitions it so nicely with a sharp dig. And Billy Allen was there, but the ball was just a little too sharp. a little underneath that one. I don't know why, but I feel like I have an attachment to watching jump servers tosses. Makes it so clear just based off the
the toss whether it's going to be a good ball or not. And they have been great on both sides. You know, a little low, I think, at times, because all, you know, Weber's a great jump server, so is Casebeer, and sometimes they shortchange themselves with the, with the lower toss. I think of Chai Horn yesterday and his ability to toss consistently every single time was really on display. And allowed him to do a lot of different things from not only pace and velocity, but great placement. I think of April Ross being one of the greats at that as well. Well, you have to. I mean, it's the one action that you fully control. Yeah, that's a great point. Off the left hand. Wow! Yes. Nearly making the impossible possible are Hayden and Weber. Fifteen to fourteen. Things are getting tight here in set number two. And there's that cover with the left. Hayden gets it up but just not high enough for Weber to make the play. Time out, a little, take a break right here. It is hot, it is very still, 60% humidity, about 83 right now degrees, and the players using all the opportunities that they get to take a little break. Ice towels, Water, so important to hydrate. Drinking that Waikia water, that's for sure. Again, this is a match out of the elimination bracket if you are just joining us. So it is win or go home. The winner will face the number 10 seed in Corey and Palm. You can see the others awaiting in the elimination bracket, including the number five seed of Dahlhauser, Patterson, who face off against Finnish and Evans. Brunner and Schock, the number one seed. Well, they were shocked last night against the number nine seed who defeated them and Brewster and friends. They will face Buttinger and Field. Lee and Pretty also waiting. The winner of Dross, Frischman, Dietrich, and Smith. Stat line for Kay Spear. Three blocks, five controls, two aces, and six service errors. These two teams did meet a few tournaments ago in Fort Lauderdale. It was Hayden and Weber who took the victory in just two sets played. First set score, 23-21, Dane. The other direction. Second set was 21-16. Iden Weber walking away victorious. That was not the ball. John King, where are you? Yeah, it looked like it was the ball. What'd you think? I think there was a net? I don't know. I think I'm with you, Dane. Yeah, I think the ball dropped. But, uh... You heard the comment from <laughs> Jeremy Gaysbeer. John King, where are you? <laughs> yeah, I heard him call. <laughs> thank, you. thank you for getting a chuckle out of that I, one. I think, I think John said Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny, Jeremy. Oh, that's got to be frustrating right there. Casebeer with a beautiful form, press block, goes straight down, but just out of bounds. 16 all, 15 kills, 321, three blocks, and five controls for Logan Weber. Last time these two met, it only took 45 minutes. to walk away victorious. We're beyond that now. Ball out of bounds. And a net violation. <laughs> Weber asking if the ball was out of bounds before he touched the net. But it's kind of hard to believe when the ball was sent long out of bounds, out the back end of the court. That's a distance to cover. It's a tough argument there. <laughs> Trying to. I mean, I get it if it's like a straight down right. swing, but not so much on the on the depth of that one. <laughs> Billy's quick. Oh. Fakes the option. Here, 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 here. Trying to hang up there with Case Spear. And Billy loves it. Jeremy asking for some extra love for his partner, and rightly so. 
Yeah, you don't see Billy Allen fire up too much, but right there, you can tell he was excited. He knew how crucial winning that rally is in this two-point lead. They're just three points away. Billy Allen has been one of my favorite athletes to watch compete in the last few tournaments. Just his execution level, his defense has really been on display. Plus his transition ability, he's just fun to watch. He is. And I like, I like how consistent and steady he is. He's kind of got that poker face. You never know when he's really up or really down. He keeps it focused, keeps it consistent. He'd be a fun guy to play with. You know, someone who you know what you're going to get when you get on that court. Billy and Jeremy took a loss yesterday to the number five seed, Dahlhauser and Patterson. It was a two-point game in each of those sets. That's a high swing from k -Sphere. It was 19-21, And Allen hit, I believe, 500 in those two sets played. Or excuse me, 462. 500 in set number two. He's hitting 500 as well. 14 of 24, two errors. 19-17 now. Still going for it is Jeremy K. Spear. They have a little bit of a margin. I don't mind that. Yeah, you go for it, right? You got to keep the aggression. You got to keep ripping the serve. And I think that's the frame of mind that K. Spear is in right now. Two and seven for K. Spear. Go with the middle. Yes. Quick oh. like a whip. And it is I like that. Even the fist Billy pump Allen for Billy Allen. He knows that's big. When you're going up against Weber, anytime you get it past him, especially late in a set, you got to celebrate it. Billy Allen chance getting him into match point now. 2018. Slow clap begins. Tight ball. And, and there it is, the net violation closes out set number two as well as the match. Allen and Kingsphere have flipped the script from the last time these two teams met. Hayden and Weber are going home to this at this point, finishing with a 13th. Allen and Casebeer are going to have a little bit of a quick turnaround as they're going to have to face off against Corey and Palm. Yeah, that's going to be an awesome matchup as well. A lot of athleticism on that one. And Casebeer really starting to feel it. You know, if he can get that serve dialed in, he's going to be in great shape. The city of Chicago loves beach volleyball, and especially that guy. Between Billy Allen and Jeremy Casebeer, I'm walking the streets yesterday hearing fans talk about how oh, Jeremy Casebeer just walked by us, took a picture. They love this duo, and so far they're playing pretty phenomenally well here in Chicago. Jeremy Casebeer up at the net. He brought the pressure from the service line. And his partner, some beautiful defense and transition, Dane. Yeah, and what Billy Allen did was he managed up at the, the net. He took Weber out of it by jousting at times, by shooting around him at times, and did not let Weber completely control the airspace above the net. And I think that was a huge difference. Their composure was there, and they took control with a very efficient 354 hitting percentage. And the block's about even, ace is about even, but it was those broken plays that seemed to go the way of Allen and Casimir, and I think that was a huge difference. Yeah, without a doubt, the difference shown on the screen, and now the difference in the bracket. Allen and Casimir, now highlighted, will face off against Corey Palm. We are still moving through this elimination bracket here in Chicago. We've got more to come on this steamy Saturday.